Hi everyone. Um, we're going to work on this one called F Tiled today as our daily challenge. Um, I've changed my setup a little bit with my camera. Hopefully this is better. I'm going to try it and watch it and see how what it does. And if it's no good, I'll go back to the other one, but I'm hoping that this will make it a little more easier on me and how I draw. So we're going to give this a go. Um, hope everybody is okay. You guys have been practicing doing your, your thing. Um, I'm going to leave this. I can't see my screen, so I don't know exactly where things are exactly, but I'm going to just put this so I can see it better. And it'll probably be just out of your viewfinder, because that, that's all right. That'll work. All right, so I think since this is a uh, grid pattern, but I like this, I like this just single one. I think I'm going to put a single one right in the middle of my tile, and then do like background behind it. So I'm going to draw me a single square like right kind of in the middle. It's not exactly in the middle. Let's go a little bit more like that. A little bit more like that. Alright. Erase the lines that I don't want. Yes, I use an eraser. Especially when I'm setting up more complicated. <coughs> excuse me, grid like pattern. So I'm going to draw one just right here in the middle. Uh, appears that you start with oh, kind of a circle in the middle. I'm going to go ahead and make this border, I think. Kind of square. Well, that's pretty square. I'm surprised. All right, so I'm gonna just make sure that, that that's going to be a square, not some kind of weird. So that's gonna go to about there. Okay. I'm not doing that to to draw a straight line. I'm just doing it to kind of measure out to make sure I've got a a square happening here. Okay, so the next thing we do is sort of a flowery looking thing. Looks like it's got three scallops along each side. So one, that. I think I'm going to put them, put the middle ones, the corner ones in first, I think. It's not how it's shown on the step out, but I think that's, that would make me more comfortable, more happy with its general shape. Like this is how it appears it looks. And then you fill in this part here. So I guess that didn't make that much difference that I got a little wonky right there. Fill in this part right here. And I think this will clearly be an easier one to do with a smaller square. But I really wanted a one big one in the middle as a like a focus. Kind of like a uh, mosaic floor maybe would be. So fill these guys in. Kind of 
smooth out these little edges. And then it has from the center <coughs> excuse me. From the center it has these little kind of a shape that goes up like that to fill that in. And it can be some one way and some the other. They don't all have to match the same direction, it looks like. They can go different ways. But they all kind of come up and create this sort of a flowery looking effect and then it looks like you do a little extra bit here to give that some dimension right like that to those little petal-like things. Okay. And then the sample shows going back around here and auraing this. But I think if I was drawing this in a grid, I wouldn't be able to do that. So I'm going to incorporate that in step number one as I continue. And I think I'm going to make my grid you need a I need a border here. Need some sort of stopping spot, I think. And I think I'm going to make my grid going this way. Just going to do it in pencil. That way, and then I want it square so. I do want squares. Um, squares go, let's do one straight through the middle here. Make those square, or as square as I can. Not it's going to be exactly square, but square-ish. Okay. Alright, so I want to erase this bit in the middle here. Oh, and it does show a little bit of a highlight. I thought the middle looked funny. The middle, little bit of highlight like this in the middle. One side is thicker. That's better. I knew it needed something. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and draw these. Go ahead and draw these. And then I will do step last step first. I hope that makes sense. Um. When you guys are doing your, your tangling and your patterning, if you come across where you, you need a grid, um, I don't usually use any kind of 
ruler or marker or straight edge or even a piece of paper, you know, like this to make to make draw an actual line, you know. You could. You could stop and you could draw an actual line. I don't do that. Um but because I like mine, I know mine are not going to end up being perfect anyways. So I just can't make my hand go draw that steady. So since I know I can't make my hand that steady, I don't worry about whether or not those lines are exactly measured, you know, a grid directly the way, you know, perfectly straight is what I'm trying to say. I don't worry about that. Um, but if you are a little OCD and that bugs you to see the grid a little cattywampus, then go ahead and use a ruler if you really want to. I find, I find that that takes the joy out of it and makes it more mathematical and more like I'm drawing um, something architectural, like, uh, you know, like architecture school drawing um, rather than, than drawing for my own happiness. But, you know, if if having it all wonky uh, really stresses you out, then go for it and get out your pen, your ruler and do, do your thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the last step first and put that little border as my first step. Does that make sense, what I'm doing here? Can you figure that out? I'm glad I drew that one in the middle first because that would have... I think that this particular pattern looks really great with this border thing around it. And if I had started with the grid and, and just drawn it, I wouldn't have had that border. I, w I would have totally missed out on that part. And I think... That's one of the things that's really kind of cool about this particular pattern is this is this little border around each tile. Thus, probably the name F tile. I think that's what it says. It's called F tile, and since it's like a tile, oops, pardon me. I moved my phone, so now it's gone all crooked. Um, so the, since it's left like a tile and square tiles, rather than drawing them separately and then trying to draw that square around, I, I'm going to do it this way instead. But it is taking a little bit of concentration. And like I've said before in other videos I have, that uh, I do do these in real time. I don't uh, don't fast forward on purpose, and so they do end up kind of long. and And I certainly would take absolutely no offense if you just get the general idea and then move forward and fast forward through this thing. I will not take offense to that in the least. I'm just glad that YouTube allows longer videos. There was a time in YouTube's history that I know your videos couldn't be this long. So I would have been out of luck or you would have had to watch part one and part two as separate things, which would have been just sucky. Just saying. I just want to go around each and every one of these before I start the pattern so that I have that tile like look to it.
Did I get them all? Looks like I got... No, just missed that little corner. Okay, got them all. Now I'm going to go ahead and start, but I'm going to do it in one of the ones that's a full one, just so I have a little more practice on doing this. So we want the circle in the middle. We want these little flowery shapes, which I'm going to start with the corners. I'm going to find that I find that that it's going to give me a more consistent, even look to this shape. Right. Fill in this little bit right here. And you know, maybe I'll go around and do the whole this shape first in everything, all my tiles. I think I will. That will kind of give me that Zen thing. The Zen thing has to do with the repetition. And if you spend too much time making your pattern and there's no repetition, the Zen thing doesn't seem to happen. And it's just really weird because I could draw each each one of these tiles. I could draw the whole pattern, one pattern, one pattern, one pattern. But it seems to be the repetition. So I'm going to do all the circles first and then I'll go back and do all the... the bumpy parts and then I'll go back and do the rest and that's what seems to make the calmness happen so it's the repetition and not the, the pattern itself that causes something in your brain to go <sighs> I like that part of patterning. Okay, so then I'll go and go go ahead and do the corners in every single square first. doing the same C C like shape crescent shape in every single corner that's my repetition You just have to remember when you get to the places where it's running off the edge, you just have to pretend it's, you know, you can see the other side and just keep going. Just because you're not drawing it doesn't mean it's not there, like right here. Pretend it's still there. Come around the other side. Just pick up your pen so that you don't actually draw it, but keep that same movement so that that you're your line is consistent. Okay, it's going to go up, it's going to come around, and it's going to come out there. That one didn't have a whole lot of line to it, but I know it's there. This one in the corner I know it's not really going to be much there. I'm going to go ahead and fill that in. These are going to end up being filled in. Now see, I stopped my what I was doing, and and I shouldn't have done that. That 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 goofs up my zen. I want the zen in the zen tangle. I do hope my, my videos helped somebody somewhere along the way.
I think I've said that before. I'm trying to just, I don't know. Totally I'm doing this for me because this is helping me to draw every single day. It's helping me draw every day. or most days actually. Uh, some days I have to do a couple of them in one day because I just don't have the, the time every day to record. I have the time pretty much every day to draw, but I don't have the time every day to record. So now I'm going to go back through here and I'm going to put that, that middle bump Because you don't always have the, the luxury of a quiet home every single day. So I will do three or four in one day. I will do the three, three today, I think, if I have time. I have to go to work, so I might not have time. I've missed okay so now I can go back in and fill in all those little spots around the edge sometimes I would change my pen to a thicker nib to fill in if I have a bigger area but this is actually not that big of an area there's a lot of areas but they're not that big so I'm going to keep with the same size pen but you're going to be with me a while folks so, either be patient or fast forward. I may not say a whole lot of things that are very profound here. When I'm not recording and I'm just drawing for, for me in my sketchbook, most of the time when I'm doing this part, this these long stretches that are all the same when I've chosen to to do a, a pattern sim similar to this that's it's got a lot of small bits um, this is when I have my prayer time I have my quiet time I think about particular people a lot of times um, Excuse me, I may be running off the page. I apologize. A lot of times 
I will start my 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 thoughts and my prayers and and the tile will sort of evolve based on who I'm praying for, what I'm praying about. Sometimes they're particular people. I can go back through my through my notebook and through my journals and and I might not have written down who I was praying for at the time, but I will remember. I'll remember the the situation. It's like a little journal that is kind of private, even though other people can see the art. Um, I know the thoughts and emotions that were going behind each one of my drawings, and. Um, I know when the drawings are about prayers. I know when the drawings are about anger or frustrations. I know when the drawings are trying to get me to think about solving a problem, perhaps. Um, I can look at the ones. The, there's, there's one particular one that I, I know right off when it uh, speaks to a, a hurtful time in my life. Um, there's another one that is I can I can I can look to that one and say, Oh, this is when I was thinking about my grocery list. Yeah, I do that too. This is a good time to think and to work out the problems in your brain and have your brain engaged in making the patterns. And as your brain is thinking about the pattern making, it's working in the background to do whatever it is that you've asked it to do. It's kind of like my son, he's, he's very into computers. And so I do a lot of computer analogy. And you know, um, there's a whole lot of stuff your computer does in the background that you don't even know. Um, you know, you've got your basic commands and things that you're doing actively, but then behind the scenes your computer's doing all sorts of things. It's checking its own maintenance, it's making sure that it's up to date on all of its software. It's, it's um, you know, if you've asked it to do something on one screen, you've, you've opened multiple windows, and in one window is the window you're working on now, and another window, it's it's solving some complex thing like um, video editing. You know, I've got one window open that's, that's that's processing my YouTube video, and at the same time, I've got another window open that's doing uh, my current whatever I'm I'm doing on the on the computer, whether it's shopping or or you know chatting with my friends on Facebook or whatever, um, the active window is like my my uh, my zentangling. Zentangling is is like my active window. The thing I'm doing, my brain is actively engaging in. I have to move my pen. I have to think about the pattern. But since it's repetitive, I'm able to sort of do it on autopilot a little bit and allow the, another part of my brain to continue to work on those on those issues that I need to have solved whether it's just you know um, making a list for my groceries or whether it's it's you know working out a, a personal issue between uh, myself and somebody else whether it's a work issue um, all those things can be working in the back of my head while I'm doing this and it's amazing how sometimes I can completely like be done and, and say okay so now I'm going to go to the grocery store and I'm going to buy this, 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 this and they just that list just comes right back out because it's my brain's already been working on it while I was tangling and other times with with social interactions i can i can if i haven't 
solved the problem, because sometimes there are problems that are not really solvable, I can at least come to a conclusion that I've done the best that I can in a certain situation, and there's nothing more I can physically immediately do other than just wait and let it play out and it will be what it will be and sometimes you have to just let it go and and sometimes that's what's happening in behind the scenes while I'm tangling as well allowing that stream of consciousness that thought process to just do what it needs to do so that you feel better and at the end of the day when I'm done with my tile 99% of the time I feel better about whatever it was that was bugging me or I was working, worrying about or working on you know it just kind of solves itself while I'm doing other things sorry if I've gotten out of screen again I'm trying really hard not to okay so what's next next to these little palm frond thingies middle swoop de doop things. Make them whatever shape. Some of them are going one way, some are going the other. We're just going to do all of them at once, I think. I was going to do one all the way around all the same direction, but my hand said, nope, that's not this tangle. Whoops, that's going in the wrong spot. That's all right. Nobody will know. The point of this tangle doesn't seem to be that these little arm bits, it seems like they, should, they need to go different directions. They if they were all swirling one direction, it would have a different kind of movement to it. I mean, you could do it all one direction, but you'd you'd have to intentionally start that way, I think. And that's not what this tile seems to want. The sun's coming out. I don't know why, but today we're having a bit of monsoonal weather. It's warm, but it's cloudy, and it looks like it might rain. It would be nice if it rained. We don't get much rain here where we are, so we rejoice when we have rain. It would help the firefighters and drought but it makes for a very cloudy video day I don't have the luxury of lighting and so forth in the spot where I'm using to draw. So if it gets dark, I won't be able to do as much here.
and here we go. I'm in the Zen zone again. Then I just need to do this little, make it a little bit fatter, and this little bit here. Oops, missed one. So I just need to make those a little bit thicker right at the end. I just need to thicken up a few spots. And we'll just go back and do that. Create this little area here. We'll just do that on all of them. I think my tiles will be randomly placed. Like the tile setter paid no attention to what side anything was. I was in a store. I was shopping yesterday. Well, so I wasn't really shopping, shopping because I didn't buy anything. But I'd gone to a local mall mostly to get some exercise. I wanted to do some walking, but it was too hot outside to walk. So I went to the mall and I people watched, which was hilarious. You know, some people are just weird. There are weird people out there in the world. They really are. Anyway, um, but there was a, a store that had this really cool floor. Black and white tile floor. Great pattern. You know, I noticed patterns because of the Zentangle thing. I, I thought to myself, oh, I should take a picture of this floor. But then it was driving me absolutely crazy that it appeared that the tile guy just grabbed tiles randomly. And sometimes the pattern would go in a pattern and sometimes the tiles would not line up. Uh, that was driving me nuts. And so I decided I wasn't going to take a picture of that because it, it, yeah, it was just driving me nuts. I suppose I should have. I could have come home, figured out the pattern, deconstructed it, created my own version of it as a Zentangle, and I could have fixed that issue that bothered me. But it was like the tile guy just picked them up out of the box and just slapped them on the floor, not paying any attention to whether or not there was some sort of pattern that was supposed to be going on. And, um, yeah. And they just signed off on it and they left it that way because it was already on the floor. I don't know. I wouldn't have paid the tile guy. Just saying. So I was looking for, wasn't specifically looking for shoes, but I was looking for sandals. I thought, well, while I'm here, I can, I do need a new pair of sandals for summer. I'm not a shoe person. I don't have like a ton of shoes. Usually I have, I have right now, currently, I have two pairs of tennis shoes. One, one for regular walking in one for like if I'm going to do something messy like out in the garden and I have a pair of shoes that for work specifically just for work and 
think I have two pairs of dress shoes. I have one pair of hiking boots. You know, that's kind of specific. And right now I don't have any sandals that are comfortable, that fit. I have a pair of sandals up there I was going to wear the other day, and I put them on and went, oh no. Something has gone terribly wrong with these shoes. I think they'd sat at the bottom of the closet too long and gone all crooked, and they were just gross. So, they went. So I don't have any sandals for this summer. And that, you know, doesn't bother me too much because I don't wear them that often. But I thought, well, if I happen to be out and I'm wandering around the mall, maybe I'll find some sandals that I like. Sandal time of year. Uh, yeah, not so much. That didn't work. I... I'm getting very particular about my shoes in my old age. And... And so I... I've tried on a couple of pairs of shoes, but... For the most part, they either didn't fit, or were just ugly, or were looked like torture devices. I think most shoes look like torture devices at this point in my life. I prefer a comfortable, kind of flat, no high heel shoe with some support. Yeah, I'm 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 searching for old lady shoes. I really am. And they're not out there. You're looking for sexy shoes? Those you can find. Uh I can't wear those. I've tried. I've got a couple pair in my closet that never come out. Or they're the what I call the one hour shoes, where you're gonna go out to dinner for one hour and that's it. Yeah. Anyway, that was what I did. And I found nothing. So I came home empty handed. With no, not completely empty handed. I take that back. I came home with a wallet that had the same amount of money in it as when I left. There we go. Look at that. That looks good. I like it. I'm going to sign it here. And I think I need just a little bit of shading. Not a lot. I think all I'm going to do is I'm going to just highlight that this is on top. Make sure you get all the way up against the... All the way up against your line. Otherwise your, your object seems to be floating in space and that's not what I want. Want it, I want it connected to its shadow or its shading. And if I want to make this so that it has a dimensionality to it that's going one direction other than, than another, think if I have my light going this way, then I want to make this shadow bigger on this side and on this side than it is on the other side. Just make it deeper and a little bit darker on these two sides. And then we need to blend, blend, blend. did a little bit no maybe not okay I like it just like that yeah I think I feel like this needs I feel like this needs something I'm do a little bit right like this to make these pop 
just right there. Not not a lot. Yeah, I like that. Okay. I think I'm done. That would make that F tiled. Oops. Not bad. Not bad at all. 